Hello, hello, and welcome back! Today we are going to take a glimpse at how the Great Depression was impacting the American people. And to set the stage for everybody, remember last time we are talking about President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his New Deal. Well, one of the first New Deal programs that will be set up by Roosevelt is the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, the FERA. What that will do, one of the things that that will do, the director of that program, will assign a journalist named Lorena Hickok to travel around the country. She'll get to 32 states just to get a glimpse of how the Depression was impacting people. She talked to everyday people, farmers, factory workers, clergy, teachers, you name it. She talked to them. And what she found was that the unemployment was having a devastating effect on city dwellers and farmers alike. That's right, as Mr. Valencourt said, people were facing extreme hardships because of this depression that was gripping the nation. People were out of work, and to make money, they did anything they could to earn a little bit of cash. They sold their belongings, took any work that they could find. Many had to swallow their pride and accept charity. Now, this was something that most people were not used to, and the mindset of that time was that you would work to gain your living, and you would not take handouts. Unlike today's world, where some people are content with sitting on welfare and not working for their money. People were having trouble with the idea of that, yes, I need to accept a government handout in order to keep my family alive. And there still are people like that today that, don't, that are very resistant to that. But we'll talk about unemployment a little bit. One in seven businesses would fail between 1929 and 1933. And when Mr. Hovind is talking about high unemployment, we're talking about 13 million people out of work, 25% of the workforce. And, this, and to kind of compare, only 3.1% had been unemployed before the stock market crash. And where was that unemployment at its highest? Well, that fell in the category for African Americans. They faced even higher unemployment than other people. The people at this time were ill-housed, ill-clad, and ill-nourished. Malnutrition due to lack of food. People weren't getting enough to eat. The marriage rate, birth rates declined. Divorce rate declined because people could not survive if they decided to leave their spouse or their family. The suicide rate increased because of the conditions that just seemed hopeless. And evictions and foreclosures of homes were on the rise. Dramatically. So people were hungry, right? We talked about malnutrition being a problem. So what we'll start to see springing up all over the place are bread lines and soup kitchens. And these were sponsored by charities and churches and also public assistance from state and local governments. They sprung up all over cities in order to feed the hungry. In New York City, there were 82 soup kitchens providing 85,000 meals a day. And in Chicago, the first soup kitchen was actually set up by Al Capone. That's right, the same Al Capone that we talked about when we discussed prohibition and the rise of organized crime. So as Mr. Valencourt said, African Americans were one group that was strongly affected by the Great Depression. Another group was the farmers. Now, the farmers had the issue of paying off their farm debt. Property values declined by as much as half, and many faced foreclosure. Basically, when you're not paying off the land, the rent, the bank comes and takes your home or your farm away from you. And the foreclosure rate by 1932 had increased 700%. Things were even worse for farmers in the Great Plains, looking at Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico, because they were experiencing what's known as desertification during the early 1930s. And what does that mean, desertification, Mr. Ogan? Desertification basically means, in this area, it's an area that the soil is not well, it's not held down by many trees. However, when the farmers came in and they began clearing the land, all of the trees and anything else that would be holding dirt down would be gone as well. So they began planting these crops that had very small and loosely fitting root-like structures. So when wind came, if it was a strong wind, the dust would be blowing away with the storm. It only got worse by the time they were over farming this land and letting animals overgraze the land. And what you start to see in the 1930s is severe dust storms, which will be nicknamed black blizzards brought on by severe droughts in combination with what Mr. Hoven was just discussing. This would affect 100 million acres of farmland. 
And if you take a look at the pictures, you'll see the dust. All right, this is the real deal. And in the second picture, this is someone's belongings, their vehicles, their tractors, under dust. And this would happen to people's homes as well. And one of the biggest problems that happened during the Great Depression, when these dust storms started, farmers thought, oh, it's just once in a while. This is a one-time thing. So they would replant again. But they weren't doing anything to keep the soil down. So without the rain and the desertification, with these dust storms occurring more than one time, their crops were being blown away or killed. One of the reasons was because of the static electricity that was created through all of the particles moving against each other in these storms, and that would lead to the crops being killed as well. Yeah, and many livestock would be buried alive underneath this dust, like we said, people's houses and belongings as well. And you'll see lots of new farming techniques that people will start to take on be as a result of what had happened in the right. Dust Bowl, such as rotating where, what crops you're planting yep. where and such. So what was already bad for these farmers due to the effects of the Great Depression became worse when the Dust Bowl began. And from 1933 to 1936, more than 300,000 families migrated to California. Quite simply, farmers were not able to grow crops to sell to make money. So they they had to go somewhere else? They had to go somewhere else, and that's when they headed to California. Many of these farmers came from Oklahoma, and they were known as Okies, and this came to be applied to all farmers who left. And the, this mass movement of individuals, especially farmers, to California inspired John Steinbeck to write the book known as The Grapes of Wrath. Did many of them find work when they got to California? Not really, right? They, they, they struggled. A lot, some did, some didn't, but they went there thinking, oh, it'd be easy to find work, you know, once the harvest is coming. And because so many people had gone there, that wasn't necessarily the case. So today we've talked about the impact of the Great Depression on the American people, right? Unemployment is extremely high, which is made worse by many people who had already lost their life savings when the banks failed. So not only do they not have a job, but they don't have any savings that they might have already had. They're selling their belongings. Families are clinging on. Lack of food because lack of money. The farmers are facing a hard time. Foreclosures are going through the roof, especially on farms and on houses in general. A great movie that shows that is actually uh, Cinderella Man. We'll, we'll take a look at that in, in class. A clip of that, at least. All right. The Dust Bowl will make the situation worse for the farmers in the Great Plains, who are then forced to leave their land and head to places like California, where the majority are coming from Oklahoma, so they get that nickname, Okies, right? But do we ever get out of the Great Depression, Mr. Owen. I know that FDR put all these New Deal policies in place and saw differing degrees of success, but does it solve the problem that is the Great Depression? Does it turn the American economy around? It's a good question. Really, with all of this legislation that FDR had passed, he's met with limited success overall. And it's not until World War II begins that America is able to pull itself up by its bootstraps and get out of this Great Depression. And we will be looking at that when we start our next unit, World War II.